Hello, hello. Hey, everybody. We're going to do a count countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hey, hey, hey. I hope you guys are all having a good day today. Today has been a little trying for me today. Um, we have a whole lot going on. And we got a whole lot to be grateful for. Today is day five of our 14 day journey of staying at home and creating more and consuming less. And the reason why that's important, I'm going to talk about a little bit about that today. Hey, how you guys doing? Hello, hello. Um, I'm going to talk about that today. We're going to talk today about being grateful. I mentioned it yesterday. We're going to be have things to be grateful for. And so, of course, as soon as I made that proclamation, as soon as I made that decision, I was hit with something that really challenged me um, being grateful. And so what do you do when you have great things that are going on, but then those great things are confronted with difficulty, tragedy and bad news? And so this is not something I read about in a book. It's something I'm living through right now. I found out yesterday that somebody that I love and care dearly about is basically fighting for their life. And so that really kind of shook my world. And so for those people who don't know anybody or you are not connected to anyone who's being affected by, hi Renee, who's being affected by the coronavirus, I would say just like people say, either you're coming out of a storm or going into a storm. Just wait, because I believe that all of us are going to be directly and indirectly affected by this. And so, hi. So I just want to say that um, today is um, a struggle for me because I had to really, really spend a lot of time in worship today. I had to really, really remind myself of who God is and what his word says and not be focused on how I feel. Because I think sometimes we can be allow how we feel to override what God's word says. I don't know if you guys can see my shirt today. I have on a shirt that says, I am healed. Isaiah 53, 5. And for me today, this is more than just a t-shirt. It's my proclamation. It's my declare. It's my decree. It's what my heart really, really desires from God is for God to heal us, to heal the people in our life, heal people who are working as uh, on the front line, to heal those people. And so, um, what do you do when you are confronted with something that can make you want to basically complain and be upset versus being grateful? And so what I do is when I'm confronted with good news and bad news and they kind of collide, I make a decision to pray about and tell the Lord how I feel about the thing I'm concerned about. I don't act like it's okay because it's not. And when people that you care about are hurting, when people that you care about are sick or when they're in a bad place, it's only human for us to allow that to say, hi, Barbara, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. It's only human for us for that to affect us. And for us to say that it doesn't affect us, I just really question if we are human. And so what I had to do today was I had to really, first of all, Wednesday is Wednesday is wake up Wednesday. Wednesday is the day each week where I have set aside a time to fast and pray. I do water fasting. I pray. I intercede. I call out to the Lord. I just spend time with the Lord because I think that with everything that's going on, we all need to make God our refuge. And the way that we do that is by physically spending time with him. Not just um, that we spend a little bit because I spend time with God every day. I mean, and, and prayer and worship is a part of my everyday. But I think that right now in these days, we need to make God the place that we run to, to be refreshed and refilled because no one can do that except the Lord. And so I got news of someone I love, love about and care about dearly. Hello there. Thanks for joining. Um, hi, Marissa. Thanks for joining us. Um, is in, in, in the emergency room and they're in ICU and they're fighting for their life. And so I'm not going to say who the person is, but I want you guys to be praying for people who are in ICU, praying for people who work on the front lines, because those are the people who are really being hit really, really hard in their families. And so we're going to pray about that today when we pray. But what I did today was I just spent some time just worshiping the Lord, because I think that praise and worship is the best place for us to go for God to refresh us. And so... What am I grateful for? What I want everybody to do today, I want everybody in this feed 
to write down something that you are grateful for. I want you to write down also a prayer request. I want you to write something down that you need to be prayed for because I think it's important that we pray for one another. Uh, Elijah, go out. Go out. So I have a little visitor who wants to come in. Close the door. I love you. Bye. Close the door. Bye-bye. Toodles. Thank you. Close the door all the way. Thank you. See, he was trying to come in here. Elijah has no concept of boundaries. But um, So I want you guys to write down somebody that you're praying for. And I want you to write something down that you are grateful for. I'm Today, I'm grateful for... God's love, his grace, his kindness, his mercy. But I'm thankful for, for, to God for you. Because as we come together, because the Bible says if any two are gathered together in his name, he's going to be in our midst. So I think that us doing this 14 days of staying home is a really good way for us to say, Lord, I trust you. And to all those people who are fighting on the front lines and fighting for people's lives, we're saying, I don't want to add to the burden. I want to lighten the load. So I just want to say thank you guys for you guys who've made a commitment to staying home and staying in for these 14 days. Because I really believe that the greatest act of our obedience to God is by just following the rules. Just doing what we're asked to do. We don't have to understand it. We don't have to like it. But I really believe, and that was something the Lord spoke to my heart today. Those of us who are committing to staying home... And not going out during these 14 days. I really believe that we are going to see God move in great, great ways in the lives of people who are on the front, front lines. Because for us, if we're out, we make ourselves susceptible to being a patient. So by us staying in and interceding and praying and, and meditating on the things that are good and pure and loving, I believe that God is in the atmosphere of what we're doing. And so I just want to tell you guys, thank you. I'm grateful for you guys' commitment to spending these 14 days in God's presence around other people in community, which is what we're doing right now, as well as doing something different. So I kind of mentioned it briefly, what I'm grateful for. I am grateful for you. I'm grateful for this opportunity for us to be together. But I'm also grateful because we found out um, the other day that we were picked up for our podcast on Pandora. And I was so elated and excited, and I still am. And it's just amazing how when, when, whenever God blesses you abundantly, be ready for an attack to come because that's just the way life is. And so I think that because Gil was saying, I was telling him how I felt today. I was telling him that I felt sad, and I was telling him I felt upset, and I was telling him I was concerned, and I was talking about all the things that were going on, and and he was saying, "Baby, one thing at a time," and. And, and normally, I'm a very positive, optimistic person, but life doesn't always happen one thing at a time. Sometimes life happens five and six and seven and eight things at a time. And for those of us who are outgoing, extroverted, joyful-based people, normally, it takes a lot for us to be kind of shaken. And so I believe that if, if, if those of us who are joyful, outgoing, bubbly, extroverted people are being shaken by this. We have got to pray for the introverted um, people who are more pessimistic. We have to really be praying for those people because those this is going to be really hard on them. So what I want to do today is, because today is to be grateful, I want to tell you about just this whole journey of the you know, if you guys have watched, you guys know, like Renee has known me, I was her hairstylist. So she's watched the whole transformation of what God is doing. So I've gone from being a hairstylist to um, starting a product line, to getting my certification in plant-based nutrition, to writing three books, to being, and Marissa, I know Marissa because I was one of the co-hosts on Atlanta Live and that's something that I love and I thank God for. And so from that, we shifted into now we have a podcast. And it's called Rich Relationships with Gil and Renee. And when I tell you that if I had to lay everything else down and give it all up and only do one thing, I could do the Rich Relationship Podcast with Gil and Renee without any hesitation, without any regret of laying everything else down. And so I just want to encourage you all that we have to learn how to see God's hand and the things we're going through, even when we don't understand his mind. Because I think a part of it, we think we have to understand everything. It's not about, oh, under, obedience is not about understanding. Obedience, grateful for what God is doing. I'm grateful for the doors he's opening. But I really want to encourage you that 
Gil and I are just regular, normal people. I think that God is using us because we're available. And so I don't think that it's about what you know or who you know. I think it's about your heart and your willingness to surrender and to give God what you have because we're not professionals. This is not like we've been trained to do this. It's not like we have some, some parents that it left us inheritance. We're just other than God. We have his inheritance. And so hello, hi there. Thanks for doing this. So I just, I want you guys to just take the time to write down what you're grateful for in the feed as well as on your own. And I want you to um, write down what your prayer request is. But I just want to pray right now because I think it's so important that we just lift each other up in prayer and that we, that you have somebody praying over you and that we are also praying over someone. So Father, right now in the name of Jesus, there is so much going on. And Father, I promise that I will not allow my heart to be troubled. But Father, I'm human. And Father, the people that I love, I love them hard and long. Father, I pray and I thank you that you have given us a heart to care about people. But Father, I thank you most of all that we could never care about anyone as much as you do. Father, regardless of what's going on, regardless of what we see, regardless of what we feel, Father, we know that you have a plan for us and it's to give us a hope in the future. Father, I pray right now that you would just speak to the heart of every single person that's struggling right now. And Father, I pray that you would just give joy, give us peace, give us clarity, but most of all, remind us of our eternal purpose. Father, help us to not be so in love with this life that we're not preparing for the next life. Father, we thank you so much for your word that it is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Father, I thank you for every single person that will hear this, um, this our time together. Father, I pray that just like I said yesterday, I pray that every single person with a cell phone will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Father, use our lives, use our strengths, use our growth areas to be a witness to people. Father, help us to be a light in a dark time. Father, help us to spread joy. Help us to also be sober. Help us to even share when we're hurting and when we're sad. Because that's just as much a part of who we are as all the other parts of us, Father. Father, help us not to be ashamed of being afraid. Help us not to be ashamed for being sad. Because, Father, you gave us all those emotions. But, Father, we give them back to you. And we ask that you would exchange our sadness for joy that you would exchange our concern for an assurance of who you are. Because, Father, your banner over each of us is love. And we are so grateful for that. We thank you for the things you've blessed us with. We thank you for the things that you've withheld from us because you knew that if you gave it to us, you would never see us again. So, Father, we just want to be in a right relationship with you and we want to be able to love people the way that you do. Because, Father, how can we say that we love you and we can't love the people that are around us? Father, give us your spirit. Lead us, guide us, teach us. But most of all, direct us in your way. Help us to be more like you. Help us to be the kind of people that when people see us, they glorify our Father in heaven. Father, I speak peace over our hearts. Father, I just thank you for the spirit of worship that we would be able to learn to focus and meditate on the things that are good and pure and lovely and of good report, and that we would not allow ourselves to ignore the bad or the disappointing. But Father, we won't meditate on that. Father, we would spend more time in your presence and more time in your word and more time talking about the goodness of the Lord than we ever do talking about all the things that are breaking our heart right now. Father, I pray for healing for people who are in hospitals right now, Father, I pray for strength for people who are taking care of them. Father, I pray for protection over people in who are working with people who have compromised health or compromised immune systems. I pray that you would just protect them with your blood, Father. Father, I pray a hedge of protection over every single person who has a heart that loves you and for those who are lost. Draw them back to you, Father. Father, don't allow us to be controlled by fear. Help us to be motivated by love. Because your word says that perfect love casts out fear. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you for these five days that we have made a commitment and a proclamation to stay home and sit at your feet and be in your presence. Father, we pray that we will forever be changed, that we won't be like we were before these days began. We will be different. We'll be more like you. We'll be compassionate. We'll be kind. We'd allow the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, meekness, and self-control to govern us. Father, 
thank you so much. Thank you that we can come to you because you know us and you know our names. We glorify you. We praise you. And we just say thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all, I know that um, there's a song that I have just been thinking about. And it's from when we were, we were young. We were, it was a song. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's an old song. And it just talks about be grateful. Be grateful. Be grateful. God has not promised us only sunshine. We're going to have to have rain. We're going to have to have good days and bad days. And so we have to learn how to have. I think the, the epitome of a grateful heart is a heart that says, Lord, whether it's a good day or a bad day, whether it's sunny or rainy, whether things are going the way I've planned or things are going totally awry, I trust you. And so I think that the greatest way for us to display that we are grateful is not to not be sad, not to not be upset, not to not be concerned, but to take all of that and say, Lord, I give it all to you because I know that you're going to work things out for my good. And so I just hope you guys are all having a good today, good day today. And even in the midst of the smiles behind them, there could be sadness. And that's okay because God didn't expect for us not to be human. He knew that we were human. And I think that sometimes God allows our heart strings to be pulled so that we can draw closer to him and be more intentional about relationships. You know, everyone keeps saying, how is this going to be different? I pray that when this is over, I pray that we will be more intentional about our relationship with God. I pray that we be more intentional about our relationships with people and we be more intentional about making sure that each day we fulfill the purpose that God created us for and that we will create something beautiful every single day. So thank you guys so much for being on here. Again, write something that you're grateful for. Uh, LaRue, I am grateful for you too. <laughs> LaRue says that she's grateful for friends who pull her back Oh, when she's running away, we all, I think we all run from God. I think that's, it's nature, human nature for us to drift. And that's why we need people in our lives. Because right now I might be being an anchor to you, but guess what? One day you're going to be an anchor to me. So we all have a responsibility to be an anchor and to, to know we're going to need an anchor one day. Hello there. Hi, Rhonda. Thanks for being on here today. I think that says Ty. Hi, Ty. Hi, Glenn. Hi, Vivian. Hi, Marissa. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Renee. I love all you guys, and I'm so glad we're having this time together. Um, the babies tried to come here today. That's one thing I'm grateful for. One thing about Lyric and Elijah, they are two and three. They're our niece and nephew. They have no concept of what's going on. But I could even feel it in them. They're starting to get restless. And so they're starting to get on each other's nerves. And so I'm sure that that's happened with a two and three year old. I'm sure that that's happening in some family. So please, we have our, our the podcast. That's what it's designed for. Um, we had an episode this week with Babby Mason. Please go and listen to it. It was really amazing. And um, we also have an app. It's called um, Speak Freely with Gil and Renee. And we're in the process of changing. If you notice, it says, it used to say Renee M. Beavers. Now everything is going to be rich relationships, us. Or, um, and that's, if you want to find us on social media, find us on our website, it's rich relationships, us, that's what we're focusing on. That's what we're going to put all our energy to. Cause I'm not the kind of person to do four or five things at a time. I'm kind of like a one person kind of person. And so I really love the podcast. I love what we're doing. I love that we're getting to help couples. I love the beginning to leave a legacy of rich relationships. So I love y'all and thank you so much for being here today. You guys made me smile and put some joy in my heart. And so I pray that I've done the same thing for you. So go do that for somebody else. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Today is day five. Day one was be still. Day two was be real. Day three was be, what was it? Somebody tell me what day three was. Day four was, uh, we have, we, so we've had to be still, real. Um, put them in here, y'all. Put them in the feed so we can share them. And I'll put them in there as well. But I love you. But today is be grateful. Yesterday was be humble. So I love y'all. And thank you. And I'll see you guys again tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Bye-bye. I love you. Blessings over you in Jesus' name. Hello, hello. It's a countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Five, four, three, two, one. Hey, everybody. I hope you guys are.
all having a great day today. Today is day six of our 14 days of staying at home. And I am elated, excited, and grateful today. I hope you guys are all excited and grateful today. I just want to tell you that I love you. And God answers prayers. And so we'll talk about that. I want to invite some of you guys to come on here with me. Let's invite some people. I'm going to invite you all to come on here with me. Come on in. Come on in, my peoples. Hey, hey. Hope you guys are coming on. We are going to celebrate a victory and continue to just talk about what we're doing and how this is going. And I want to ask you guys, how many of you guys are not just watching me stay at home, but you're actually staying at home? Um, today, Gil had to go outside and start the car because um, basically we haven't been driving it. And so um, I invited some of you guys in. And so I just want to come back on. Hello there. Hey, Angela. It's good to see you. I saw your post. It was amazing. Thank you for sharing that. We do need to make sure we are sitting at the right table. And so today is day six of our 14-day journey of staying at home. And today is be patient. Be patient, be patient, be patient. Our scripture is Isaiah 40. We all know the scripture in regular and different translations. But I put it, I'm going to put it up today. I'm going to put it up in the Message Bible because it was so powerful. Because we all know they that wait on the Lord, they renew our strength. But when you read it in this translation, it is so powerful. So I put it up. I'm going to put it on Instagram and on Facebook, everywhere on uh, all the platforms. I'm going to put it up in the Message version. Hi, Angela. So are you staying at home with me? Angela. Angela Black, are you staying in? And if you guys are staying in, how are you doing? How's it going? Are you stir crazy by now? What's the longest days you've ever stayed in and not gone out? Now, we're still walking around ourselves. Like yesterday, we didn't go out at all because it was raining. And it looks like it's raining today. But I think we're going to have to walk with our rain boots on. But um, Renee, how, uh, Angela, how are you doing? How's it going staying at home? Are you stir crazy? Or are you okay? Are you considering this a time of rest? Hello there. Thanks for joining us. So what we're going to talk about today, we are going to talk about being patient. You know, there's rewards for being patient. There's rewards for waiting. And it's not, hey, LaRue, welcome in. It's good to see you. Hello, hello. Um, there's rewards for, today we're talking about being patient. So it's, so we had and, and Angela, thanks for always bailing me out when I don't remember all of them. But I wrote them down today, so let's see if I remember them all. The first day was be still. We had be present. We had be humble. We had be grateful. And today we have be patient. Oh, I forgot one. Okay, what's the other one? Okay, I still forgot one, Angela. I need your help. Please put the other one on there. Hey, Sharon, thanks for joining us. Today we are talking about be patient. And so today is day six of our 14-day journey. How many of you are actually staying in and not going out and also not letting people come in? Because that's just as dangerous or unwise as going out. And um, even like when we get boxes to come in, what we're doing is we're spraying them down with Clorox. We leave them in quarantine before we bring them in. And so that's what we're doing. Um... See, I learned the last time I hit that button, I got kicked out of my Facebook Live. So I know when someone messages me to ignore it. But I just want to tell you guys, I'm so grateful. I'm so excited. I'm so filled with just joy and happiness and gratitude. My friend I was telling you all about yesterday that really had my heart heavy and I was concerned. We got a report today that we, um, her daughter made a video of all of us saying that we loved her and just different things to her, praise and worship in the background. It was a 45-minute video of all of her friends telling her that we love her and we're praying for her and we're wanting to see her again. And she woke up today, y'all. So God is still in the resurrection, miracle-working business. We need to remember that, like I said, we're all going to be touched by it. We're also going to be blessed by it. And so that's what I want us to be meditating on and thinking about. 
Just be encouraged. If you have a loved one who is struggling right now, continue to pray for them. Reach out to them. Send them songs. Send them prayers. Fast. Um, we have got to not only know how to go to the Lord with our requests, we have to know how to begin to bind and loose. Loose the things that need to be loose and bind the things that need to be bound. bound. So prayer and worship is not just us telling God what we need and what we want. It's also spiritual warfare. And so for those of you who don't understand spiritual warfare, it is when we begin to say what God says about the situation, regardless of what we see, regardless of what we think, regardless of what we feel. Hello there, Angela Fox Worthy. Thank you for joining me. I love you. Hope you guys are having a good day. Um, but I wanted to show you something that I did today. Because, um, you know, we've been talking about stay home, eat what you got. And so um, I'm not really big on juices because um, one of the, bis the biggest nutrient that we miss in our lifestyle is fiber. So I made this juice. Hello there, Angela. I love you. I'm trying to read what you say. Hey, Barbara, welcome in. We're glad you're here today. You guys have to listen to the replay of the video because God supernaturally, miraculously woke my friend up. And so I'm just grateful that if God is doing that for us, he can do it for every single person. And so praise God. That's right. Let's give some hearts. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He is still moving and working even in the midst of this tragedy. God is still being God. And so in order to get this juice, what I did was I took about a handful of kale, four carrots, a banana, and I used a little bit of local honey, and I used um, eight ounces of water, and that's how I made this juice. So this is how you can make juice if you don't want to go out, which we're supposed to be staying at home, y'all, being at home, eat what you have, pray fast, do that. So um, today is be patient. And, you know, of all the fruits of the Spirit, patience is patience and self-control are the two fruits of the Spirit that I would have to say that I am constantly in pursuit of. Hello there, Sharon. Hi, Crystal. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Renee, I'm so glad you guys are here. Please go back and listen to the replay of this, um, of this broadcast because God has moved on and, and, and helped and healed. And I believe he's not just doing that for the people that I know and care about. He's doing that for you guys as too. He's doing it for you, people that you love and care about. He's moving. I just believe that we got to stand in faith and believe him. And so I asked how many of you guys are actually staying in. I want you to put it in the feed. If you are staying in, I know, hallelujah. I know if you guys are staying in, please put it in the feed that you're staying in. Today is day six. Um, I don't feel like um, I'm missing anything. I don't feel like I am like deprived because I think a part of it, and, and for me, like I talked about patience of all the fruits of the spirit, patience and, and, and self-control are the two that I'm in in hot pursuit of always pursuing, always trying to manifest them in my life and yield to their power. Um, it's not just that we wait. It's how we wait. And I put a blog up and it's called The Weight of Waiting because waiting is not something that we're necessarily taught how to do in school. We're taught how to do a lot of things, but we're not taught how to wait. And so how we wait is just as important as that we're waiting because I really believe that during these 14 days of us committing to the Lord, the Lord, we're going to stay home. We're going to seek your face. We're going we gonna to bind some stuff up. We're going to lose some things. We're going to call your name. We're going to lay at your feet. We're going to worship you. We're going to call some people and talk to them. We're going to send some videos to people. We're going to send some notes to people. We're going to read our Bible. We're going to write a book. We're going to write some songs. We're going to do something. We're going to create more and consume less during this time. Because I really believe that what the enemy means for your bad God can use it for your good. It's just about our attitude. It's our disposition. It's how intentional we are going to be about what's going on. And so waiting, how do we wait? Do we wait with our arms folded like we mad and like um, we're upset? Do we wait only thinking about it being over? Hi, Renee. No, no, that's not for me. I really believe that's why I wrote that. Create more and consume less. If we will begin to let our energy build something beautiful then we'll have a legacy that we can leave for the next generation and so just like this little juice i made you know okay i don't have all the things i like but guess what i'm gonna use what i have 
And so I think it's important that we learn to wait on the Lord with expectation, with, with grace. We need to wait on the Lord being active in doing something. We need to wait on the Lord serving others. We need to make sure we're waiting on the Lord with, with joy, with um, contentment. Because a part of it is understanding that when we wait on the Lord, we have to know that we can't control the outcome. You know, we can we can ask the Lord, but we, we can't make God do something he's not going to do. And we're praying. We're not trying to get make God do anything. Uh, yeah, I, I know the rule. Patience is, I, I said that earlier, if you listen to the replay, patience and um, patience and um, self-control are two of the fruits of the spirit that I am striving to increase because we all have a measure of all of the fruits of the spirit and it's our responsibility to begin to cultivate those ones that are not as fruitful in our life because the fruits of the spirit are in all of us but we have to make sure that we're because guess what guess how you learn how to be patient the Lord showed me this it was so simple I, it was during Christmas time I was in the line and this, everybody was complaining and fussing. And he said, the way you become patient is by waiting. So guess what? We are always going to be waiting. We're going to always either be waiting on something to change, waiting on something to happen. But we have to learn how to live in the now. We have to learn how to be grateful for the people around us and the situations that really might be uncomfortable. And so, yes, Leroux, I agree. Patience is not something for me. My biggest, how many, if you guys had to guess which of the fruits of the spirit is my strength, what would you all say? The people that know me know. So if you, let me tell you all, all the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, meekness, and self-control. Those are the fruits of the spirit. And the two that I struggle with the most is self-control and patience. Angela. I want to read what you wrote, but it's long, and I ain't got on glasses, so I'm going to read that afterwards. But Angela, I, I'm so glad you guys are on here. I, I, I want us to get to a place where we can go through difficult times, and it doesn't destroy us. And so the fruit of the Spirit that is my strength, yep, Angela got it, joy, that's right. I, man, I have joy even on a bad day, I and you know what? Really, sometimes that one can be annoying to people. Because when me and Gil first started dating, we weren't saved. We didn't know the Lord. And we would go away for the weekends. And he would say, are you going to wake up like this every day? <laughs> so you're, the fruits of the Spirit are in your life even when you're not saved. It's, it's a part of the way God created you. A part of it is understanding that when we walk in, that when we get saved, then he can use it for our for his glory and then it also brings people to the kingdom and then we get to go to eternity but yes yes Angela you're right it is joy joy is my superpower and so therefore gratitude is a fruit of that and so I, I want you guys to know what your strengths are what are your growth areas because as we learn that we can really begin to be better when things happen because things aren't always going to go as planned um, I didn't plan this. We, we, we are in the process of making our transition to our next stage in life or what God, what we believe God's calling us to do. And guess what? Right now, everything's on hold. <laughs> so you think I like that? No, I don't. But a part of it is learning how to be patient and to trust God and to know that sometimes the delay is the destination. And sometimes we are so goal oriented and we're so next thing we're so now we want everything now that god is like mm, you missed me because you didn't pause you missed me because you didn't get still you missed me because i was i was in that delay i was in that tragedy i was in that um bad situation and so i think sometimes we don't realize that god never promised us the bad things weren't going to happen he promised he he, he one of the things I love about God, he puts the bad news up front. Um, <laughs> yeah, Renee, joy is contagious. It's contagious to other people who have joy. Because people who don't have joy, be like, she get on my nerves. And I had to learn how to be okay with that. And so I do. We have got to learn how to love the way God created us. 
but also consider the way people around us are, are not. And so I, I just love you guys. I'm so grateful for this time together. So let's pray. We're going to be doing a lot more spiritual warfare, y'all. We, we're going to be calling down some things and bringing some things down. So you guys join me in prayer. Um, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your blood. And I thank you for the power of our testimony. Father, I thank you that you have given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. Father, I thank you that anything that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God has to come down. Father, I thank you for bringing down imaginations and high things and high places in our lives, altars we've built. Father, I thank you right now that every single thing that doesn't bow to the name of Jesus is broken off our lives right now. Father, I thank you that what is bound in heaven will be bound in the earth. Father, I thank you that what is loose in heaven will be loose in the earth right now. Father, I thank you that any disease with a name has to bow to the name of Jesus. Father, there is none greater than you. Father, there is no one like you. Father, you created us. You have a purpose for us. You have a plan for us. Father, even in the difficult times, Father, we cry out to you, Abba, Father. Father, we lay at your feet and we worship you. Father, we stand in the gap for the people who are in the front line right now, Father. Father, you know them and you have written their name in the palm of your hand. And Father, even if we do go to eternity, we will stand before you and you will say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Father, help us to not be afraid of dying. Father, help us to know that when we are in you, we are going into eternity. But Father, help us to be intentional about using our time wisely and our gifts and the talents that you've blessed us with. Help us to understand that we are mere stewards. It all belongs to you, Father. Our lives, our goals, our dreams. Because your word says that if we would delight ourselves in you, that you would give us the desires of our heart. That doesn't mean that you are going to give us everything we want, Father. That means that there's going to be a shift in what we want. We're going to begin to want what you want, Father. Father, as a nation, as a, as a generation of people who have turned away from you, Father, I repent. Father, I ask that you would forgive us. Forgive us for putting anything in the place that only you should be. Father, you shouldn't have to share the throne because you are the King of kings and Lord of lords. Father, I thank you for every man and woman on this feed. Father, bless them as they surrender and submit to the call to just stay home, to be blessed, to be able to have a home, to be grateful, to be able to have family. Father, I thank you for my sister that she woke up today, Father, and I thank you that there will be many stories like that to follow. Father, and for those of those people who don't wake up on this side of eternity, Father, thank you that they have a relationship with you. Father, help us to not just be concerned about living, help us to be concerned about eternity, that we live a life that brings you glory and honor, and that most of all, Father, when we stand before you, you will say, well done, thy good and faithful service. So right now, Father, we just say, take our time and our talents and our treasures, and we lay them at your feet in exchange for your approval, because the approval of man is, it pales in comparison to the love and adoration of our Heavenly Father. Father, we glorify you. We lift you up. Continue to heal us. Continue to make provisions for us. Heal our land, Father. Help us to love and know and serve, not the creation, but the Creator. Father, we love you so much. We glorify you. Help us to continue to build and cultivate, to build, repair, and restore healthy, rich relationships. Bless every single person that we, as we listen to this, as we come together, as we surrender. Because your word says, if any two are gathered together in your name, you'll be in our midst. So we know that you're here with us, Father. And we just say we love you and thank you. Thank you, Father. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory, glory to your name, Father. Hallelujah. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. Amen. and honor and that most of all father when we stand before you you will say well done thy good and faithful service so right now father we just say take our time and our talents and our treasures and we lay them at your feet in exchange for your approval because the approval of man is it pales in comparison to the love and adoration of our heavenly father father we glorify you we lift you up Continue to heal us. Continue to make provisions for us. Heal our land, Father. 
Help us to love and know and serve, not the creation, but the creator. Father, we love you so much. We glorify you. Help us to continue to build and cultivate, to build, repair, and restore healthy, rich relationships. Bless every single person that we, as we listen to this, as we come together, as we surrender. Because your word says, if any two are gathered together in your name, you'll be in our midst. So we know that you're here with us, Father. And we just say we love you and thank you. Thank you, Father. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory, glory to your name, Father. Hallelujah. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. Amen. journey we have got to learn to trust God and we have got to love people hello April Lafarge you know to all the entrepreneurs who are having to close their businesses down God decides which nations rise and fall and you know I, I want to just share something hello there thanks for coming on here hello 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 um you know God knew this was going to happen and I think that because he of course he knows everything but I think about something as simple as, you know, Lyric and Elijah are here, they live with us. They're two and three years old. And we always says celebrate Resurrection Sunday together. And I always make them like a little basket and I put like different things in it. Well, a few weeks ago, I was in the store and the Lord said, get their stuff now. And I was like, but Lord, I said, okay, just go get it. I'm like, I'm just going to do what you said. I thank God I listen because guess what? I wouldn't be going out. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just going to obey. I'm going to stay in. But they already have something because God spoke to my heart and I surrendered. I didn't try to. So a lot of times we want to understand. And if we don't, if we have to understand to obey God, we are going to miss him habitually. We've got to just learn to listen in the small things. And so I know that's not a big thing, but it was a big thing to me because I said, oh wow, God, you know what? You always let us know what's going on. God is revelatory. He's not trying to keep secrets. So we, if we would learn to listen to him, or we would learn to spend time reading, spend time worshiping, spend time being a vessel he can speak through into, we, our lives will be so much more rewarding. And so much more fulfilling. So I just love you guys. Thank you so much for being on here today. I pray that God would bless you with a tsunami of peace and joy and love and goodness and faithfulness and kindness and self-control. Because we need all that. Baby, come and say hi to everybody. Gil is here. Come, come on, come say hi. Gil don't like to be on video. But y'all like to see him. So here's my honey. Say hi. Come on this side. Hey, everybody. I can see Everybody can see see all the gray and all that. <laughs> it's what the house is doing for everybody. So we love you guys and we thank God for you. Please listen to the podcast. Um, I also realize we're also on Amazon. So God is just opening up doors. So if you guys are at home and you are kind of like feel like you have nothing to do, we have 44 episodes you guys can go and listen to. Download the app, Speak Freely with Gail and Renee. And just more than anything else, work on building, repairing, and restoring healthy, rich relationships. I love every single one of you. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Angela Black. Thank you, LaRue. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, Patricia. I love you guys. Thanks for being on here. I pray that God bless you abundantly. Angela said, hi, sir. You can just call him Gil. You ain't got to call him, sir. He just Gil. <laughs> so I love you. I'm going to um, comment, re respond to all your comments. Um, thank you so much for being on here. Please share the video. Please continue to come. Tomorrow is day seven. I love you. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye. Love you. I love you. I love you.